Hello, good morning, lovelies. Um, we are supposed to have seven people today, so far only two of you here, so we'll wait a few more minutes. Um, but if you have some sort of a band, that will be very helpful for today's stretch session. At one point, you'll need a wall. And it's also a good idea to have a block or something that you can use to prop yourself up. In fact, if you want two of those. If you get sore knees when you're kneeling, um, you might like to have a cushion to pop under your knees as well. So morning, Karen, morning, Tash, morning, Sharon. Just waiting for four more. I might have to send them their little good morning reminder. So I've got quite a lot on the agenda today. I'll get started. As I mentioned, um, a band is really helpful for today's session. You will at some points need a wall and it's useful to have one or two blocks around to help prop you up at different points through our stretch session. Um, we're going to be doing some new and interesting things today because I was studying quite a lot of movement in my week off. Um, and we're going to start from the centering principles and work outwards from there. So it kind of goes all over the place. So let's get down onto our back to start with. Just notice how your body feels as you arrive on the ground, like your shoulders roll back and down. And definitely go ahead and give your low back a massage into the ground. And tucking and tilting. And if this is a live class for you, then at any time you have questions, feel free to pause and ask. Find the comfy spot halfway between the imprint and the arch and let your hands rest down on the ground with your chin tucked in and the back of the neck nice and long. I want you to lift your pelvic floor as you breathe in. Feel the ribs nestle down towards the hips as you breathe out. And then think about the inner thighs drawing inwards towards the hips as you inhale. Take that right heel out along the ground nice and slow as you exhale. Try not to let the hips move. Slowly bring the right heel back as you breathe in. We're going to switch to the left side, extending out through that left foot, finding just the right amount of pressure. Slowly bringing it back as you breathe in. Be really conscious that the belly doesn't pop up. So we're starting with a little bit of Pilates activation for the pelvic floor, to the insides of the thighs, and we're going to work out from our center. One more on each side. Great, and still thinking about the ribs and the hips moving towards each other on the belly. We're going to bring one leg up, so the knees are over the hip and the heels in line with the knee. Then we're going to bring the other leg up as well. Try not to let your belly pop up or your shoulders round in. Keep the shoulders down and back as you come to this position. Keeping the belly flat, pelvic floor lifting as we inhale. The hips down really stay really still as the heel comes to the ground on the exhale. Bring it back up as you breathe in and switch to the other side as you breathe out. I really need you to keep the chin in and the shoulders down. Belly flat, tapping the heel, lifting as you breathe in and tapping as you breathe out. We're going to do one more of these on each side, okay? Tapping on the exhale with the heel, not the toe, lifting on the inhale, so really flexed, active feet. Heel drive is much more effective for iliac this activation. Last one, I'll give you one more try. And then rather than tapping the heel down, we're going to keep the rib to hip connection, shoulders back and down, pelvic floor lifting as we breathe in, pressing the heel away as we breathe out. Bring it back on the inhale, Press the heel away as you exhale. Doesn't have to be super low. Try and find full extension. Exhale, extend. Inhale, return. Rib to hip connection. Keeping the belly nice and flat. One more on each side. Great. Bring the feet back into tabletop position. Keep the belly flat as the feet come down onto the ground. We're going to shift up into our shoulders now, bringing the arms up so the palms face each other and then spreading the shoulder blades flat and broad into the ground. So I want you to think about the shoulders wrapping down towards the hips and then the ribs wrapping down towards the thighs. We're going to lift the pelvic floor as we breathe in and extend the arms back till the thumbs touch the ground as we breathe out. Bring it slowly up, 
as you inhale and extend it away as you exhale, keeping the ribs knitting down towards the hips, keeping that chin tucking in and the back of the neck nice and long, extending away on the exhale, keeping the ribs down towards the thighs. So still not allowing the belly to pop up. Just noticing how our shoulders feel as we move through here. Last one, bringing the hands back up as we breathe in, turn the palms down, press them into the ground as you breathe out. So really push those shoulders open now and then settle the ribs back down. Lifting the pelvic floor as we breathe in. We wanna keep the knees parallel as we lift the hips up and breathe out. If your feet feel too far away, just shuffle them in and then slowly come back down. So we're not working on a back bend, we're working on waking up our bottom. So really think about using the bottom to lift the hips as you exhale and come back towards the floor as you breathe in. You can start to make this more of a spinal curl if you've got a healthy spine, so you can tuck, lift and peel away. And then slowly pull the ribs in first to bring the bottom back down to the ground. If, however, you've got a lumbar disc bolt, you're going to want to lift the hips as one solid movement and bring them back down rather than tucking and peeling. That won't really be in your favour. We're just going to do two more. Great. From here, the band, whatever band you've got, we're going to pop it around the legs. We're going to bring it up onto the thighs. We're going to press the shoulders down into the ground. And we're coming up into that bridge. Now we want to make sure that we're really long and flat through the hips, but also really hollow through the ribs. Cool. Take a breath in, squeeze your pelvic floor, and as you breathe out, push out into the band without letting your hips drop. Bring it back on your inhale, push out again on your exhale. Back on the inhale, push out on the exhale. So before we stretch, we need to make sure all of our muscles are active and that everything is awake. <laughs> Three. So we've started with a bit of core. We've worked into the shoulders. Now we're waking up our hips and our glutes. One, bring those knees back to parallel and you can either roll down or slowly bring the hips to the neutral pelvis to the ground. Bringing your arm up by your ear, the one that's closest to the camera, I want you to shuffle to the back of your mat and then roll forward. Stick your bottom out now, bring this top hand down onto the ground in front of you and roll the shoulder back and down. We're going to keep the heels touching. Take, and we can send those feet a little further away. I just want you to notice the side of your waist that's closest to the mat. Lift it up, lift it away from the ground. Lifting your pelvic floor as you breathe in. Push open into the band as you breathe out. Did that top hip roll back? I want you to roll it forward for me. Inhale it down, exhale to lift. Inhale it down, exhale to lift. Good. We're going to do three more and then a 10 second hold. Three. Keep the hip rolling forward, two, and the bottom sticking out, one. All right, let's take it up and hold for 15 seconds. So we're coming up nice and high, pushing into the band, tailbone back, ribs to hips, and the sideways lifting on the ground for another eight, seven, six, five. So your chin tucked in, back of the neck long, three, two, one, and relax it. We're just going to come and do that on the other side as well. Awesome. Oh, hello. We've been joined by Rachel and Ara as well. Good morning. <laughs> we can see you on my laptop. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. So we're just sticking the bottom out. We can shuffle the feet a little further away. Make sure the top hips rolling forward. The side waist is lifting and the top hand is in front of you to support you. Lift the shoulder back and down. Lifting the pelvic floor as we breathe in, pressing the knee into the band as we breathe out, lowering on the inhale, opening on the exhale. This is, knees are quite low here. We don't want to feel it in the front of the hip. What we're trying to activate is our glute med. So we want to feel this in the top side of the hip. If you don't feel it in the top side of the hip, poke it and wake it up. Cool. So really get the top side of the hip firing here. Last two. And then we've got that 15 second hold. 
Let's take it up and keep it there. Holding our shape, keeping the belly flat, the tailbone back, the chin pulling in and the shoulder down and back. We're here for another eight, seven, six. Keep pressing up for five, four, three, two and one. Releasing that. Taking the band off and slowly coming over onto our hands and knees. Well, onto our feet actually, but we're going to be sitting on them. Okay, so ankle mobility, soles of the feet. So we're looking at a couple of different lines of fascia in today's sessions. Try and leave you feeling nice and open and balanced for the rest of the day. But the back line of fascia starts in the sole of your feet. And often because we wear shoes too much, our ankle mobility is pretty poor. So I want you just to start sitting on your feet. Notice your shoulders stacked over your hips, ribs drawing in, chin drawing back. This little double chin so that the back of the neck is long and the head is in the correct position over the shoulders can be really difficult to find, but very worthwhile. So feel your shoulders squeeze together, your ribs knit down, and your chin pull back to lengthen the back of the neck. And just breathe here for a moment. Great. Bring your hands forward now. We're going to tuck and spread the toes underneath us. And I want you to be careful your heels don't collapse out. We need them to be right in their neutral alignment. So not in, not out, right parallel. You might need to spread your toes with your own fingers to get them to tuck and sit nicely underneath you. And that's okay. We're going to do this for 10 seconds, but we're going to do this three or four times. So see if you can put all the way down through the heels, keep that belly sweeping in, back is long and lifted, shoulders are drawing back, rolling down, the ribs are in, the chin is in, and the back of the neck is nice and long. So we're here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Come forward onto your hands, please. Take your knees back underneath your hips, lengthen through the front of the ankles. We're going to start just circling over the wrists. Little circles. Make sure your middle finger is pointing straight ahead, that we're gently drawing back through the arms. Just little circles through the wrists. Now we're going to go the other way. Notice how your wrist feels. The further forward your weight shifts, the more intensity. The further backwards your shoulder shifts, the less the intensity. Come back onto hands and knees. We're going to try and tuck and spread the toes from here now and press the hips onto the heels. Making sure those legs are parallel, the toes are tucked and spread, softening the shoulders inwards, then down. The ribs are doing the same thing. The chin is drawing in. The back of the neck is nice and long. And again, we're here for another 10, 9, 8. Hope you feel okay, guys. I know this is no one's favorite place to hang out. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Coming forward onto the hands again and placing the flats of the ankles down through the ground. This time, I want you to think about the shoulders wrapping back and the sternum lifting up through the shoulder blades. So we're trying to create space through the backs of the shoulders. How much space can you create? Good, and let the sternum soften down towards the elbows. So feel your chest move gently down towards your elbows. We're not trying to sag and open the, the throat, just moving one part of the upper back, your chest and sternum down, and then pulling in and up without releasing your shoulders forward at any point. The shoulders stay knitting in and back. We try and squeeze the shoulder blades together here and we're lifting and spreading those shoulder blades apart here, but always keeping a long neck, always drawing the shoulders back away from the ears. We've got two more of these little scalp push-ups. And again, tucking the toes, sitting back. Let's check that your knees haven't started to spread open. We want to keep those kneecaps in line with the hip bones. All 10 toes spread underneath us. And the sit bones are right on top of the heels. 
trying to find that beautiful straight line from the back of the head through the spine down to the hips. Sweeping the belly in here for another eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Bringing it back down onto the hands, shoulders directly on top of the wrists, and ankles are pressing down through the ground. We're now going to do with our sternum in neutral, so not sagging, not over protracted, with a nice flat upper back. We're going to keep the pelvic floor lifting as we shift forward and then back. So we're all keeping the belt around the hips nice and tight, lifting the belly into the low back, but also keeping nice and flat through the upper back as we shift our weight forward and backwards. Good. Really clawing with those fingertips. Fingers are spread, working active and strong to push the ground away. Two more here. And you'll be really happy to know that this is our last round of sitting on our feet, tucking the toes under, sitting on those heels. Shoulders are rolling back and down. Belly is drawing in. And just 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two and one. Okay, coming onto your hands now for finger push ups, pushing the ankles down through the floor. Now, easiest version of this is with the shoulders behind the wrist, hardest version of this is with the shoulders over the fingertips. I'm going to demonstrate this from smack bang in the middle with my shoulder right on top of the wrists. I want you to really spread the fingers, claw with the fingertips, and lift the low belly up into the back as well as staying broad and flat through the upper back. We're going to lift the wrist and try and extend from the knuckles all the way through to the shoulders, one straight line, and then press the hand back down. So slowly lifting and peeling up off the ground and then slowly pressing it back down. So this is really important for the health and mobility of your wrist. Be careful that your wrists aren't rolling out or in. We're trying to keep that wrist bone. So you see the inside line of your wrist should pretty much line up with the inside line of your index knuckle. And the outside bone of your wrist should pretty much line up with the outside line of your ring finger knuckle. Keep the shoulders back, keep the neck long. So we're trying to maintain the wrist in that position. Three more here. Three. Two. One, good work. Pressing back to sit on the tops of your ankles. So no more tucking the toes. We can bring the right foot forward now. So just like we do finger push-ups with our hands, we can do a really similar thing with our feet. I want you to notice the arch of your foot lifting up, your toes spreading, the outer edge of the feet grounded and the heel down. So really work on shortening the distance between your second toe and your heel. So I want your arch really lifted and active. We're gonna bring the fingertips forward. If you can reach, if you can't reach your fingertips to the floor here, that's okay. Grab those blocks and place them in front of you. Wrapping the shoulders back, we're gonna press our weight forward. Don't let the heel lift off the ground just yet. Good, press your weight forward. Now we're gonna lift the heel, really bring that foot into a point. Hold your shape as you slowly, slowly, slowly protect your arch as you press that heel down. Now this is really tough, so we're only gonna do it two more times. So slowly lifting that heel up, bringing your foot into full extension through the ankle, and then keeping that arch lifted as we slowly press that heel back down to touch the ground. Give me one more of these. And back down. Good stuff. Walk your hands a little further forward if you can and drop your butt down. Holding it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Bringing your weight forward, popping the right foot back and sitting on your heels. I'm going to do this on the other side as well. Let me get to stand up for a little minute. So, shortening the space between the second toe knuckle and the heel. Spreading the fingers, making sure that knee isn't dropping out to the side and we're in a nice neutral position. So working with the foot here, slowly bringing our weight forward. 
taking our hands to the ground. I find it so much harder on this side than the other side. The other side's quite happy. This side's not very happy to do this at all. <laughs> Okie dokie. So bringing our weight forward, getting comfortable with that, feeling into the point where the heel is about to lift off the ground. And then we go, okay, let's do this. Bring it up into that really extended point with the toe spreading connected to the floor with the ankle in neutral. So really notice that that ankle hasn't dropped it out or in. And then slowly hold the position of the body, protect the arch of the foot as we press the heel back down. Oh! <laughs> Go again, you can do it. Lift into the point, try not to let your body move. And then slowly bring that heel back down. And one more time. Oh, I caramba, keeping that ankle neutral as the heel touches the ground. Bringing the weight forward into the hands. Oh no, we have to hold that stretch, don't we, with the heel now. Bring the hands forward, noticing that we're stretching the Achilles tendon, but we're also stretching out our soleus, which is a muscle below the calf that connects the ankle up to the back of the knee. And then we bring our weight forward into the hands and take the foot back and just sit into the tops of the ankles. So hopefully those ankles are a little bit both mobile and strong. We're going to do a curl up to stand next. If you have a lumbar disc problem, it's really important that you keep your spine in neutral and your knees bent and you'll move from the hips rather than rolling up through the spine. But if you have a healthy spine, go ahead and follow me. Tucking the toes, pressing the heels towards the floor now, both of them at once for a change. This should feel pretty great. Pressing the heels down, finding the arch in the feet. And just allowing the head to release towards the ground. You can nod it yes. You can shake it no. And the first thing we're going to do is to hug the belly in and lift it away from the thighs. And slowly, while keeping the tripod of pressure down through the feet, we're going to roll up and stack the spine. You don't need to bend or straighten the knees any more or less. They can stay exactly as they are when they were comfortable in your forward bend. Just taking time to roll up and stack the spine. And once you're at the top, I'd like you to lift the shoulders all the way up, squeeze them back, and then press them down. Little double chin here as we extend to the crown. Okay, we are upright. Amazing. Let's just do a couple little circles of the shoulders. And then forward. Nice. We're going to take the ribs forward, bend the knees out, soften down, curl the back as you come up. Careful that those shoulders don't lift towards your ears when you curl the back. You want to spread them broad, but not lift them up. Softening down, pressing up. One more time. Great. This is going to be a little bit strange, guys. We're going to do some work to release the abdominal fascia. But when you come into your cobras, you'll understand why we did it. It feels amazing once you release it. Bend the knees, extend the arms up, take a breath in. And bring the hands down as you breathe out. Can you interlace your fingers for me, please? When your fingers are interlaced, this part of your knuckles, you're going to bring it down to the top of your belly button. Really press your hand, your knuckles into yourself. And we're going to use that part to lift up. And as we lift up, we roll the shoulders back and open the chest. And we should get up into that space right up between the shoulder blades. Take another breath in here. Exhale, release. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, bring them down. Interlace your fingers. Bring the knuckles onto the top of the belly button. Lift and inhale. And release as you exhale. Spread the fingers. Bring the arms up. Breathe in. Bring it down. Interlace the fingers as you breathe out. Bring it to the belly. Lift and open. And let go. Do two more rounds of that. And let me just see how you're going. Good. Connecting the fingers at the bottom, bringing it into the belly, lifting it up. Good. And release. This is your abdominal fascia. Do one last round. Good. 
So bring both arms up by your ears now as so you breathe in. Your right hand is going to come down onto the back of your thigh as the shoulder comes back. Just look up at your left fingertips as you breathe in and slide the right hand down a little as you breathe out. Can you keep that chin drawing in for me? Good. Press the chest open. Squeeze that right shoulder back a little more so it's the bottom shoulder that's important here. Take two circles forward through your left arm. And now two circles backward. Bring the left arm up. Take a breath in, hollow the belly, come all the way up, and then bring your left hand down onto the left thigh, really wrapping that shoulder back. Bring the right arm up and look up at the fingertips. Good. Take a breath in, get really long through the right side of the waist and breathe out as we slide the left hand down through the thigh. Keeping that chin tucked in and the back of the neck nice and long. Let's take two circles forward. And two circles backwards. Good, keeping that left shoulder rolling back. Take a breath in, get really long. Breathe out, hollow the belly, come all the way up to stand and bring your right arm down. So we get really tight from long periods of sitting through the TFL, the QL, everything through the low side of the body. We're about to start opening that up. You should get a really good stretch here. This is my left foot. I'm going to step that over onto its outer edge. So it's behind me on the outer edge. My right foot is straight ahead, but my knee is bent and it's turning a little bit to the right as well. Now I'd like you to place your left hand on the hip. So your left hand, so what one the foot is behind, is going to go on your hip like I'm a little teapot. We're not putting weight through that hand, okay? It's just there. So it's out of the way. <laughs> your right arm's gonna come up by your ear. Take your breath in. We're gonna take it over to the side. So I want you to push your hips out to the right. Good, come back up. This time, we're gonna come forward in a diagonal. Inhale back up, try and keep the arm next to the ear. Push the hips out to the right. Come back up and go forward into the diagonal. And come back up. Great, we're going to add a little bit more dynamic movement now. If you want to move that left foot over further, you can. We're going to have the elbow bent. It's going to extend over to the ear as we tip to the side. And come back. Then diagonal. And back. So we're aiming for the ear to the side. And back. And over. And back. Good, we can bring that right hand down. Switch over our feet. Not very graceful at the switching over bit, but a second. All right, so bringing the right foot across, bending the left knee, making sure that it's pushing over gently to the left. Right hand is on the hip. We start with that left arm up nice and straight, just so we feel into this plane of movement. So we're going to tip over to the right, pushing the hips to the left, and then come up. And then we press the tailbone back as we come out on a 45. Good, and then up over to the side. And up on the diagonal and up. Good. Let's see if we can move that right foot a little further across. We're going to bend the left elbow now and extend it. I went diagonal first, whichever is fine, as long as you're alternating between side and diagonal. Through and back. Oh, that feels so good for me. My TFL and my QL, it's good times. You ready to use the wall? If you're not near a wall, it's time to go there. We're gonna do some wall angels to set up postural alignment for the rest of the day. You'll feel nice and broad and open through the chest if we do this right. This exercise can be tiring, this exercise can be challenging, but I encourage you to struggle through it and to give it all of your focus, as well as um, <laughs> work hard to not cheat, because it's really easy exercise to cheat. So finding your wall, we're going to have the shoulder blades pressing back, the elbows wherever they're comfortable, and the backs of the hands wherever they're comfortable. So we'll do this with both arms at the same time. Great. Now soften the knees just a touch. Make sure your feet are on the inside line of your hips. And then I need you to pull the ribs in as well. And that's what makes this really challenging. My bum's on the wall, my ribs are in, and the backs of the hands and the elbows can't leave 
the, the ball. What I'm trying to do now is squeeze my shoulder blades together. And I want those shoulder blades to stay squeezing together as my hands and my elbows start to journey up. You can't let your shoulders lift off the, off the wall or towards your ears. Good, and then slowly squeeze those shoulder blades inwards and down as the hands and the elbows journey down the wall. Keep those ribs in, hey? Ooh. I really am trying not to like crumple my face because what if the wind changed? <laughs> really work hard to keep the bottom of the shoulder blades on the wall when the hands come up. And then keep the shoulder blades knitting in as the arms come down. Now you've got three more rounds of this. To really measure your effort, my left shoulder blade just doesn't even play along. I'm trying really hard to get it to draw in and back as we shift up and down. Keep breathing, don't hold your breath, keep those ribs in. Keep going, I'm just gonna check on you to see how you're looking. Karen, can you pull your ribs in a little bit more? So feel your front ribs pull in and down towards your hips. Yes, that's what we want, corset around the ribs and the shoulders rolling back into the wall. Looking good, Rach. Nice. Good, Tash. Keep your bum on the wall as well. Last one. You can bend the knees a bit more. Great. That work is done. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed a little bit of postural work to start off your day. We're getting a little bit more into that. So we've started coming into the upper back. Now that we've told our shoulders that their job is to stay back and down, we're going to put that into practice. But to get back down onto the ground, we're going to do a curl, a roll down, just like we did a roll up. Again, if you've got a lumbar disc injury, this is how you will come to the floor. So bending your knees, sticking your bottom back. Otherwise, you can come with me, drop the chin to the chest, keep the shoulders back and down as you start to curl the body forward and slide the hands down the legs. So the crown of the head is leading you. One vertebrae at a time, we're folding towards the floor to follow. You can bend the knees a lot here. And once your hands are on the ground, walk them out. Walk them out into your plank position. And you can bend your knees a lot in this plank. That's totally fine. Remember, your shoulders, your arms, they belong to the back. So press them back. We're nice and flat through the upper back. We're pulling that double chin in, but lifting the head to stay in line with the spine. And the belt around the hips is staying on for five, four, three, two, one. Knees come to the ground. Let's get my other hand ready for our rotation exercises. These should feel really good. And we've done a lot of this kind of open and close through the elbow and shoulder before. But today, what I want you to think about is your supporting arm. It's not the movement of the top half of the body that's most important here. It's the hand that's pressing the ground away. So if you can come into your floor point kneeling, that we warmed up so meticulously earlier, keep the upper back flat, the belly lifting into the back. We're going to bring this hand onto the base of the skull. So that's my left arm that's on the ground. I really want you to rotate and wrap that left shoulder down and back. Now, as you inhale, point the right elbow up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, tap the right elbow to the left elbow. Inhale, open it up. And when you do that, I want you to keep that left shoulder down and back. Now, exhale, take it down an inch lower. Can we inhale and open a little more? And exhale, slowly travel down that left forearm. Inhaling the right elbow up and open. Exhale, taking it down a little deeper. Inhale it all the way up. Exhale it all the way down. Now we're going to inhale it all the way up. Hold it there with the left shoulder back and down. First, we're going to extend that right arm forward. Then lead with the little finger. Open it up to the side. Left shoulder down and back. Breathe in. Press the chest forward. Keep the belly strong and straight. We're here for five, four. Three, two, one. Now we're going to scoop that right arm under. You're going to bend the left elbow. I want you to keep a lot of generous distance between the right ear and the right shoulder, as well as through the left ear and the left shoulder. Can you come all the way down to the ground to the right shoulder? If the answer is yes, extend all the way until your right ear is on the floor. Good. Now you can place your right hand on the ground. You can turn the left fingers in towards your nose a little bit. 
but keep the shoulder back and down. Now today, keeping pushing that upper arm through the ground. So you're pushing your right forearm, sorry, your right bicep and tricep through the floor. We're gonna tap our right fingertips to our left shoulder. So bring your right fingertips to your left shoulder, pushing the arm through the ground. Two more times. Keep breathing. Great, now we're slowly going to unravel. So we bring that right shoulder all the way back up, roll the left shoulder back, we're going to open it all the way to the ceiling now. Good, and then this time we're going to bring the forearm of the right arm to the ground. So just the forearm here. And I want you to really push through that forearm. Keep the ribs in the body, the spine long and straight. Now I'm going to look to the left, start pressing, just bring that right elbow to the side and take the right forearm through as far as you can and then keep pushing it into the ground. Good, holding here for five, four, three, two, one, bring that right arm all the way up, I should feel pretty open and free now. And bring the right hand down onto the mat. All right, let's do that on the other side. I won't need this anymore. So we start with the left fingertips touching the base of the skull. We're going to wrap the right shoulder back and down as we open to the side, breathing in, and tap the left elbow to the right elbow as we bring it up. Left elbow coming up to the ceiling, right shoulder wrapping back, breathing in. And then maybe coming an inch lower down the right forearm, keeping the right shoulder back as well as the left. Good, so really focusing on our shoulder setting today. Up on the breath in. Slowly coming further and further down the arm, working to your body's level. Good, taking that left arm all the way up. And we start by extending the arm over the ear. Now we're gonna leave with the pinky finger, keeping that right shoulder spiraling back as we open the left arm up towards the ceiling. Keeping the collarbones broad, the chin drawing in, the back of the neck long. And then scooping the hand under, going as far as we can onto the upper arm. And if that upper arm presses down, then we can rest the head as well. We don't have to. And then we can turn the hand in. So I'm going to press that whole upper arm down into the ground. And then you're going to take your left fingertips and tap onto your right shoulder three times. And just work with the breath. As long as there's one breath in each direction, there's no right or wrong way to breathe. Also tap your left fingers, your right shoulder three times. Good, and then we're gonna press through the ground, shoulder back, left arm all the way up. And then this time we're just coming down onto the forearm. And that forearm is pushing away through the floor. Shoulder, right shoulder is back and down, neck is long. And the ribs are really hugging up into the body. You should feel this making space through the backs of the ribs. And we're gonna to look to the right. And we're going to take that left elbow out to the side as we breathe in and then take it through as far as we can as we breathe out, pushing that left elbow through the floor for five, four, three, two, one. Bring it all the way up and wrapping that right shoulder all the way back and bringing it down onto the ground. Good. Sitting back onto your feet. Let's get a little bit more into the hips and the hamstrings. We're going to do a little flow from a child's pose, which means we get to go into child's pose to begin. So try and keep the hips onto the heels, lengthen the spine forward, rest the forehead down. I like to swim my arms through, spread the fingers wide and press them into the ground. Just breathe into that length. Notice how your upper body feels. We've done a lot of work into that upper back and shoulders. Lots of work for the arms. Good. 
Pressing down through the hands as you breathe out. So look towards the fingers as you breathe in. Now curl the spine. You might need to slide the hands until we come into this plank position. Lengthen forward through the neck as we wrap back through the arms. You can tuck your toes if you need. We're going to slowly control down to the ground, keeping that shoulder down and back. Really important that the shoulders don't fall, point forward to the floor. And then when the chest comes down, press the ankles back down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the heart space, pulling that chin in so the back of the neck is long and the top of the head is reaching up to the ceiling. For three, two, one. Look down, lift the belly into the low back and press all the way back into your child's pose. Hmm. Let's try that again, my love, and I'm going to get my left arm ready. Okay. So we slide the hands forward as we roll through. Wrap the shoulders back as we lengthen from the knees all the way to the top of the head. Bend the elbows in as we control down to the ground and push the ankles down as we lift the head with the chin drawing in and back and back. Lifting that belly up and shifting back. This time we're gonna have an option to extend the arms a little bit more in that cobra. So look at the fingers, roll it through into a plank, wrapping the armpits back into the ribs. Slowly control down to the ground, and if you want to slide your hands forward here as we open the chest, shoulders squeezing in and back, chin drawing in, back of the neck long. This time we'll ripple all the way back down to the ground, slide the hands back to the lower ribs, and then push back into our child's pose. Rolling up through the spine coming up onto the knees and tucking the toes. This last little bit is just to put all the work we've done to practice. Keep your chin pulling in. You can take your hands and just place them onto your hips like I'm a little teapot. We're not using them to support, we're keeping them out of the way. We warmed up our butt earlier, so remember that tension in the glutes to push the hips forward. And all I want you to do is roll the shoulders back, squeeze them together. Lift the heart towards the ceiling as you pull your chin in. Lots and lots of double chins. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Lift the heart towards the ceiling. And how many double chins can you make today? For five, four, three, two, one. Coming all the way up. And we're going to step our right foot forward onto its heel. You might have some blocks nearby for this, you might not. We'll start by keeping the left toes tucked under and making sure our hips are right on top of our knees. This is the bit where I said, if you feel discomfort in the knees, you might like to use the block, uh, a cushion under your knee. Nice, long, straight back, which we should be able to achieve pretty comfortably now. Take a breath in, lengthen the tailbone back as we bring the heart forward and breathe out. Coming up. And coming forward. It doesn't have to be huge. Just getting that hamstring ready to open a little bit more. And on this next one, we'll stay forward. You can bring your hands onto blocks. We're trying to keep the chest really open and the shoulders squeezing down and back. We're going to start by flexing and pointing the foot here. Three. And come into that really strong active flex, and we can bring it in and out, letting the hip move with it. And then turn it over to the side to so try and turn the foot out a little bit more, and step your left hand over to the right side of the leg. You might need to move your left foot over to the left a bit more now. You can walk your blocks, you can walk your hands, that's fine. Just walk your hands further away, take your arms over to the right, keep your toes turning to the right, and feel your hips pulling to the left. So your left hand comes to the outside of the right leg. Try not to curl your back here, guys. Try and keep your chest lifted and your shoulders down and back. Good, we're here for five, four, three, two, one. Come back to the center, so the one hand's on either side. Check on the position of that left foot. We're now going to bend the right knee, push the right foot down into the ground, keep your left foot toes tucked exactly where it is, 
open the chest, push the shoulders back and start squeezing that left butt cheek to press the hips down. Now for this one, you might want to bring your blocks onto their shortest edge. I find this way too challenging if your blocks are down short to the ground. So as much height and support underneath you as possible, keeping that left foot flexed, try to come onto the thigh side of the knee rather than the shin or the calf side of the knee. Foot is flexed, take a breath in. As you breathe out, kick your butt. Good, bring it down, kick your butt. Try and keep a nice open chest. You got two more here. Two. One. Now we can flatten the foot down. And you can bring your hands onto your front knee. Roll the shoulders back. Keep squeezing that hip down. You want to keep your belly active here, lifting the pubic bone up towards the ridge, sliding the shoulder down and back. We're here for five, four. Three, two, one. Hands on the block. Shift the hips back. Take the toes towards the nose. Breathe in. Press the foot down. Pull the shoulders back. Lunge. Breathe out. That's one. We've got three to go. That's two. And then three. One more time. And four. Stuff. Bringing the hands down lower if you can. We're going to point the toes and sit all the way back on the left foot. Again, we're really conscious. If your spine does curl here, it's okay, but your shoulder blades need to pull out and back, not forward and up. Cool. So you don't need to squeeze your shoulder blades together. That's fine, but pull them back. Don't let them shift forward. Keep breathing. And then slowly lift the chest, bring your hand to the left, sweep that right foot back. Camel two, up onto the hips. You now have the option of not tucking the toes underneath you if you don't want. We're a little teapot with our hands on the edges of the hips. It's important that you squeeze your underbutt to bring your hips forward of your knees. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, double chin it in, pull the crown of the head away, and think about your heart trying to paint, push a rainbow on the ceiling. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Keep squeezing your butt as the hips press forward. Chin drawing in. Collarbones open, open, open. And come on back. All done. Two camels. Finished for the day with the camels. Up onto the knees. This time it's left foot forward. Hips are nice and square. And the right toes are tucked. Hands are still on the hips, nice long straight spine, lifting that pelvic floor as we breathe in, tailbone back tipping forward as we breathe out. Try not to lose the shoulders here, try and stay long and straight. Focus at the fold from the hip crease. Three, last one, and then we're gonna bring the hands down, wherever they are, and we start pointing and flexing our left foot. Two, Three, four. Then the in and outs. Really curl the toes back towards your nose for the in and outs. Three. And we're going to stay with the toes pointing out to the left. I've got to move a little bit from my wall. <laughs> you can shift your foot over to the right as you walk your hands over to the left. Good. Keep your toes pulling to the left. Try and turn your whole body to the left. And your hips pull gently to the right with the chest open and the shoulders back. We're here for five, four, keep breathing, three, keep the spine long, two, one, walking it back towards the center. Finding that long open spine, breathe in and then push the left foot down into the ground as we breathe out. And need to be nice and tall here. We might bring the box up onto the shorter edge, really squeeze the shoulders back, and we're going to kick our own bum. So make sure that the position of that knee is correct. Lifting for five, four, three. Keep your toes tucked, two, and one. Amazing. Now try and really hold this shape. I want you to squeeze that right butt cheek so much more to push the hip towards the floor. Four, shoulders are back. You can lean back a little bit more. Three, two, 
one. Let's do some alternating. You can flatten the foot down now if you like. Coming into that lunge and bringing it down. Inhale it back. Exhale it forward. Inhale it back. Exhale it forward. Doing one more. Coming into the hamstring stretch, pointing the toe and sinking all the way back. Wherever's comfortable, just thinking about the length of the neck, the broad space through the upper back by drawing the shoulders away. Slowly coming up through the spine, step your hand over to the right. Okay, I'm gonna do a little opener for the front of the thigh. You'll, you might need your block. For some people, this is really uncomfortable. There's a number of different positions. You can place your foot, you can move your knee. We're just going to experiment with what feels good for us today. We'll come back to having the right foot forward. But as we sit our bottom down, I'd like you to bring it to the inside of the left foot. So the most advanced variation of this stretch that we're about to do is with the left heel touching the left hip and both knees touching each other. However, that's not very comfortable for a lot of people. Okay, so if you need to place some space between your knees, it can be really great to squeeze onto a block here so that we protect that knee joint. You can also move the foot further away from the bum. Bring your fingertips to your butt, flex your right foot, and start to roll your shoulders back with your chin tucking in. Can your elbows touch the floor? Let's see. If they can't, don't worry, I'm gonna give you an option. Rather than your fingers facing in towards your bum, turn them out to the sides, not behind you, but to the sides is fine. And you can slide your hands away with your fingers pointing out to the sides, allowing your shoulders to continue squeezing back. It's very hard to do that with the hands pointing forward. It makes your shoulders roll forward, which is what we're trying to avoid. Cool, so keeping the shoulders back, ribs are settling down towards the hips. Back of the neck is nice and long. If you feel really great here and you want to lie all the way down on the floor, please be your rubbery self. That's fine. I'm more than comfortable here. I mean, this is more than enough. <laughs> and then slowly pressing through the hands and coming up. So this is stage one of opening this left hip fully. I'm going to now slowly bring that knee forward and across. Press it flat onto the floor. Just take a moment to hug that left shin in as we pull the shoulders back. Step the left foot across to the right side of the knee. Wiggle your left arm up by your ear. Take a breath in. Take it all the way back down onto the ground with the shoulder rolling back and down as you breathe out. Now bring the right arm up by your ear. Breathe in and scissor it across the left knee as you breathe out. Nice little twist here. Feel the collarbones really squeeze open so the shoulders are drawing down and away. The chin is in, the neck is long. We're here for three, two, one. Keep your left arm down, bring the right arm up as you breathe in. Bring the right hand down and slowly return to the middle as you breathe out. Half shoelace. So the left foot is crossing over to the side of the right hip. We're on the top of the foot, not the sole. Try to stack those knees as close as you can and try to sit equally on both of your butt cheeks. Bring the hands forward wherever they reach. Lift the heart, inhale and fold, bending the elbows as you exhale. And just noticing where you feel sensation, keeping some activity in the right foot. And our final stretch for this side, which will have you leaving with lovely open hips to match your lovely open posture. We're going to take the hands over to the right, lift the left butt cheek, scoop that right foot back towards the outside of the left hip. Then we've got to take our weight forward and lift our bum off the floor. Squeezing into the knees, sitting the bum down, 
and trying again to get both butt cheeks equally on the ground. Looking good, guys, in our shoelace. Nice, tight little pretzel stack of the knees. Hands on the floor in front if you can. Chest up as you breathe in. And feel the tailbone pushing through the floor as you tip forward and breathe out. And we just get 10 seconds here. Try and relax your jaw. And slowly coming up. We'll finish off today by doing that sequence again on the other side. So that left foot is forward, the right foot is beside the hip with the knees as close. So the hip and the knee can move away to make this less intense. Be where you're comfortable. I'm going to squeeze on that block to keep my adductors and my iliacus especially switched on. Coming down to the elbows if you can, turning the fingers out to the side, walking them away if you can't. Try not to let that foot roll out. Whew, so much to think about when we stretch with Deb, hey. Wherever you're comfortable, keep pushing your body through the floor gently. Looking good, guys. Keeping the shoulders wrapping back, keeping the ribs hugging in. I'm here for five, four, three, two, one. Coming up nice and slow. Taking time to shift the leg that's back. Bringing it across the body, pressing the foot flat into the floor. And taking a moment to sit up nice and straight, hugging onto the shin. We'll take our twist now. So the right foot crosses to the thigh side of the left leg. The right arm comes up and we place it really consciously on the ground behind us with an open chest. Left arm up and scissor it across. Keeping the chin in, the collarbones open, finding that glorious twist. And taking a few steady breaths here. Slowly coming back to the center. So the left arm comes up and then down. We're gonna cross the left knee over the right heel into that nice little pretzel shape. Find the hands where they're comfortable with a long back, breathing in and tipping forward as you breathe out. To the half shoelace, everyone feels this stretch somewhere different. For me, I feel it through the bottom leg. Not really in the glutes, mostly in the side of the leg and the hamstring. But once we come into the full expression of the shoelace pretzel, we get the butt. Deep hip rotators especially. Coming up, bringing the hands over to the left, scooching that right foot, the left foot around to the right. Then we're gonna bring our weight forward, try and stack and squeeze tight into the knees, settling the bum down through heels. Finding that equal space where we can sit, lengthening the chest forward and pressing the bottom down as we come into our final stretch for today. Relaxing the face. And slowly coming up. This right knee is going to come back next to the left. We'll come onto the hands and knees, tuck the toes, send the heels towards the floor. This is our final spinal curl for today. To start by taking the shoulder blades back, wrapping them wide to the side. We plant the heels down as the head comes forward, nodding it yes, shaking it no, and scooping the belly in away from the thighs as you either lengthen through the spine or roll up one vertebrae at a time. And at the top, we lift our shoulders, squeeze them back and slide them down, drawing the chin in and back as we extend through the crown. Thank you so much for your hard work today, guys. That is our last um, stretch at home for now.